Hello all, today I'm going to take a look at hostage negotiator career. It all comes down to this. This is from Van Ryder Games and this is a kind of a, a legacy expansion or a RPG or career expansion for hostage negotiator. Now I have all my hostage negotiator goodness in this big box which is uh was an expansion to hostage negotiator called crime wave that um added more content and actually had a um added a storage box basically where you can put all the stuff from hostage negotiator into one box here so you've got you know, got a big bigger board here uh and actually you know this is the original hostage negotiator so you can actually keep all your um you can kind of keep a travel pack hostage negotiator in here uh if you want to you know take it on the road but then this uh, careers actually fits nicely in there as well so uh kind of a nice little storage area plus i've got room for more room to grow and i'll probably take some of the contents out of uh hostage negotiator career and put it into there uh, but here's all the different um, you know hostage takers and you know your special action cards and everything you need to play the game and your meeples and your dice and all that stuff is in here but you can also put a, a second set in here if you want to have a, a portable set but you got a bigger board in here as well anyway that is uh <laughs> that's not what i'm here to talk about though i'm here to talk about hostage negotiator career but in order to understand hostage negotiator career you need to understand hostage negotiator a little bit so um i've actually done some uh content on final girl from van Ryder games and final girl uh you know grew out of hostage negotiator it uses the same core mechanic that is in a uh, hostage negotiator and what that mechanic is is uh basically there is a uh, it's basically a kind of a deck builder. You're going to have cards that you buy. Uh, the, I think they're called uh, conversation points. Here you go. Let's look at the chart here. So uh, you, you you have these conversation points on the side here. Uh, and when you do things during your turn, you're going to, you know, use up conversation points. And whatever you have left over, you're going to use those points to buy new conversation cards. Uh, and the conversation cards are going to have, you know, numerous of, of things. I mean, you've you got to think about the theming here because you're dealing with um, a hostage taker, right? You're a hostage situation so that you're having to talk them down and get them um, to uh, to release hostages or to tell, tell you their demands or you're trying to defuse the situation, right? And so these communication cards, you know, start off with some zero ones and you play those. Uh, but you can't, you know, you can play those for, for no cost and they don't take up any points on this track, but then you're going to, uh, not going to get them next turn. You're going to have to wait a turn to get these back. So there's quite a bit of planning that you have to do in this game. But then there's some cards that have higher values that you'll use whatever leftover conversation points you have here to buy these and these do different things. You'll see like these badges here and you see like, you know, plus and bubbles and you see, you know, uh, how it interacts with the dice. And so it's basically a deck builder where you're going to be buying these conversation cards to do certain things with the hostage taker, you know, like small talk and keep cool. And what I meant to say was, I mean, this is all very thematic and you're dealing with a conversation, but you're trying to reduce this uh, um, threat level here because if this threat level's high, you're only gonna roll one die for success, okay? And, uh, but if the threat level's low, you're gonna be able to roll three dice. And these dice make a big difference because you're rolling these dice and you're trying to get badges because if you get like two badges, you get a better result here on this card. If you roll one badge, you get, uh, you know, not as good a result, but not bad. If you don't get any um, uh, badges, uh, we don't need any badges. Um, then, you know, you the, the turn ends, so you're done doing anything for that turn, and you don't have as good a result. And sometimes there's bad things that can happen, like the threat level increases if you don't have results. Sometimes this right here means that a, a hostage is killed, and you definitely don't want that to happen. 
So there's different, you know, this is plus three to the threat level. So there's, uh, you want to get good results on the dice. Um, so it's basically kind of a dice manipulation game in some resorts. You're playing these cards to manipulate dice, to do uh, activities that affects the uh, hostage taker. And so uh, ideally what you're trying to do is take out the hostage taker. And that could be uh, a matter of, you know, maybe having them surrender or, you know, here is, here's one where you're, uh, you know, trying to take, take, you know, trying to rescue all the, uh, they call the abductor. You're trying to, you know, like this is where you're trying to, you know, kill the abductor. So, you know, sniper, take out, take the shot. So the abductor is eliminated. So you might try to either have the abductor uh, surrender or the abductor um, take them out. But all the while you're trying to save as many hostages as you can. I've yet to have a, a clean slate. I've always, uh, <laughs> I haven't won. I haven't won all the time. But when I, even when I've won, I have not. Uh, I've not saved all the hostages. So, uh, but you're trying to save hostages, and you're trying to take out the abductor in some way. Either have them, you know, surrender or take them out or, or what have you, um, or try to just get all the hostages taken uh, taken away. If you take all the hostages uh, away, then there's some there's some in some of the different abductors you might be able to. Uh, break in and take out the uh, the abductor. Um, all the while, the, the abductor is going to have demands, and so you're going to try to deal with those demands. You know, they might want to ask for you know, a, a helicopter or money or you know whatever. And so you're trying to deal with those demands. You're trying to save hostages, and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get rid of the abductor and neutralize the situation. So that that is the that is the um, that's the essence of the game there. Um, so what does career do to this? Well, career makes it just that. It makes it a career. There's all kinds of diff. If you've bought a lot of the content, uh, the basic pack has, I don't know, two, three, maybe four abductors. It's been a while since I've, I've looked at the basic packs. I have all the other stuff. But there's a lot of different uh, uh, expansions where you can get uh, more abductors. And the abductors, you know, sometimes they track some movie tropes that you've seen in... Uh, in some of the movies, wherever there's a hostage situation, uh, they, they've they've pulled from some of those movies, and they've also, you know, just pulled from you know other you know either real life or other movies and and out there on you know crime stories about hostage situations. And so there's a wide variety of abductors, and each one is is different. Each one has different demands. Each one has different tricks of the trade. Um, you know, some some of them are not just in a building. Some of them are on the road. Some of them are in a you know you you have to go. The one of them you have to go find a cult, or take on a cult. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of bizarre and interesting, intense situations with the abductor. So, what career does is is take all that and turn it into a career. There's like a randomizer in here where you're going to pull. Uh, figure out what abductor you're going up against, what situation, and then you play that situation. You play that game of of hostage negotiator. But then there are cards that affect that. You know that you know that that deal with well, what how's your personal life going? How's your professional life going? Uh, how what what about the stress of the situation and how's that affect your life and your career as a hostage negotiator? So that so what career does really is is take the hostage negotiator all the 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 individual abductor scenarios and turn it into as i said kind of a career mode or or a role playing game mode or legacy mode where you you just keep you keep growing and, and advancing as a negotiator uh, but you're also affecting some of the negative effects of that as well. So um, if, the, if, if Hostage Negotiator wasn't already kind of a, a dark at sometimes intense game, let's throw, a, let, let's throw a, a, a nagging spouse into the mix, right? So here are the game rules that come with it. Um, and so, you know, this is rank in the chain of command. So this is kind of your career chart here. You know, you got to go up to 10 years here. And you can keep track of all the different abductors you've done. You've got career stress. You've got personal stress. So you've got kind of your professional and your personal uh, aspects that you're going to be keeping track here. So these are the rules. And this is basically just talking about how you add in all the career stuff, right, uh, to the game.
So you've got uh, a year in the life. So you got you know a stressor event, career event, hostage negotiation, and personal event. So you hostage negotiation is you play one of the the uh, hostage negotiator games. You just you know it, and there's a randomizer in here, but you can pick out a abductor, go through the whole scenario, see how you do, and then how you did in that scenario is also going to affect your career results. How to resolve you know event cards. Uh, game phases explained in detail. These are the hostage negotiation is basically playing the game, but you have stressor event, career event, and then personal event here after you've done a after you've done a negotiation. Here's some campaign rules and concepts. As I get this, really takes hostage negotiator and makes it into a campaign game. Um, and then that's it. I mean, there's not a lot of extra rules here because it's just dealing with some of these extra cards. So you got some pads here. Um, that this is hard stock, and so I, I don't think I'm going to write on this. I, I'll probably make a copy of this so that uh, you can keep track. But you got like, looks like you got three double sided there. You've got some stuff that is kind of legacy like, meaning that, uh, you know, do not open until instructed. So this will stay in the box until instructed. Open that up. You've got some new little wooden bits. Looks like you've got this is to keep track of your career and your personal. Uh, tracks there. Uh, you've got this is the viewfinder. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. There's an interesting aspect to that uh, that they have in here. And you got a lot of career stuff in here. So there's all these these envelopes. You know that if you've played any legacy games, uh, which I tend to, to shy away from, but this one looks just look too interesting. Um, you you know you break these uh, when you're instructed to. So you'll, you'll, something will happen in your career. Say we'll open up C1, and so you'll open up C1, and that's going to add new cards or going to add something to the game that you now have to deal with uh, on an ongoing basis. We also have some little hidden boxes here. See that's a D2. So it looks like we sounds to me like we got some new dice that we're going to be getting in the career. So that's kind of exciting because if anybody's played a lot of hostage negotiator, you're used to just those that red set of dice. Uh, so, um, I don't think I can put that one back in there. So no, that doesn't go there. So anyway, so, uh, there's, so there's a lot of stuff in here that is sealed because it's kind of legacy type. So, you know, you'll, you'll, it, you don't want to spoil it and you'll, you'll, and it, actually it's one of those motivators in some respect, because you're, as you're going forward, uh, and playing the game, you're like, well, I want to get, I want to see what happens. I want to get that. I got some envelope envelopes here. I want to open and uh, I want to see what's in them. So you keep playing till you till you get to that. You know, there might be some bad stuff in here too. So be be careful what you wish for. So here are so there's that viewfinder because one they have this mechanism here where uh, you get you're going to make some decisions in your career and so. Uh, you're going to, you know, depending on your decision, then you'll use this viewfinder. I don't want to spoil it, but you'll use this viewfinder to kind of see what the result is. So there's some decision cards in here. Uh, as again, this is kind of a, uh, it adds a little bit of a, a choose your own adventure type feel in some respects um, and uh, making decisions along your career. But I mean, at its core, it's still hostage negotiator. You're playing uh, the, the hostage negotiator the way you would always played it. But now this is add, added, it bolted on a whole new world. It, bolt, it, it put the, the negotiation within the context of your career. So you, you've got to deal with your professional career and advancement and dealing with your colleagues. You've got to deal with your family life and, and, and personal life and, and, and stuff that's going on there. And then the stress of your job, which, you know, hostage negotiation is a high stress job. I mean, law enforcement is a st high stress job anyway. My I, Speaking from some experience, my... Um, father was a, uh, a police officer for 23 years and uh, for like 14 or 15 of those he was a homicide detective so I uh, don't know if he ever really got into a hostage negotiation but uh, he did have some uh, stressful times uh, during his career so um, so you have to deal with all that uh, and uh, at the centerpiece is you know the hostage negotiation game you're gonna do a nego that's your job you're gonna do a negotiation but how you do on that's now going to affect your personal, your, your professional career and your personal life. So that's basically the game. So you have a bunch of these cards here and these are all the different, you know, kind of choose your own adventure type situations. So this, uh, so this is career year 10. So this is what you get to at the end. Hopefully, you know, you're going to retire in 10 years. Uh, 
you know, if, if you make it that far, right? I mean, I imagine there's some other stuff that could happen, but there's all kinds of different years here. This is these are year two cards here. You know, you've got personal cards in here, so that that, that are going to have like make personal decisions uh, that you, that will affect your life. Uh, career year one, so you'll start off with these card for kind of cards for your professional, but you, again, you have personal. What else we got here? We got stress or legal. Okay, so that that's not good. Stress or Valerie. So you got all kinds of different stress or spouse. So th there's all kinds of different stress events here. Stress or colleagues. Yes, colleagues can never be a stressor. Whoa, whoa, I'm going to drop all these cards here because they're slipping out of my hands. Anyway, so that is the heart of the game is there's not a lot of rules to it because a lot of it is this cards. These cards kind of, again, turn into somewhat of a choose your own adventure. Uh, you make a decision and you got this little viewfinder here um so and there's look like there's multiples for each one of the different events so it's not like you know it's a one and done type game because um you know you have the you have the um replayability and the randomness of and and the different aspects of of each hostage negotiation because each of the abductors are different uh, and you know, and you can replay those. Each a lot of the abductors are not like a one and done. They they're they're really pretty tough. And even if you've beaten beaten them once, doesn't mean you're going to beat them a second time because they, they uh, there's a lot of decisions that you're making and uh, that that goes along with uh, playing hostage negotiator. So you have all that replayability, and then on top of it, you've got how your career plays out. So. Uh, I, you, I can see there's, there's quite a bit of replayability here is that, you know, you can, once you get done or if you want, once you retire, if you're lucky to get that far, set it up again, take on another career and see how it's going to go. And it's going to go probably a lot different. You can make some different choices on here. You might get different cards in here. You might some, make some different choices. You'll definitely get different uh, hostage negotiations that you have to deal with. So anyway, so that is, um, hostage negotiator. Uh, career, um, which I think is, if you're a hostage negotiator fan like I am, then uh, this is, uh, and, and you want to you want to put some context around, you know, I mean, it's, it's fun playing the individual negotiations, and you just pull it out, throw it down, play it. Uh, it sometimes it plays really quick, and that means you've, you've lost. <laughs> and sometimes, it, you know, uh, it may, might take a little bit longer before you lose, but uh, uh, it, is, it is a very tough game. But if you wanted to put some context around that, you, if you wanted to have a, a larger story, you wanted to have it be just a part of a, of a larger gaming experience, then this is probably the way to go with that, in that you can add on... You know, some you can bolt on some real life type aspects of being a hostage negotiator with dealing with your professional and your personal life. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Love to know your thoughts on hostage negotiator, on uh, you know hostage negotiator career if you've played it or or if you're interested in it. Love to know your thoughts on any of that stuff. And um, thanks all for uh, stopping by. Uh, and if I, I might be remiss, I'm doing this on Sanctuary Sunday. I normally start off with my welcome to Sanctuary Sunday, the day where I try to cover something other than war games. And this is something other than a war game. This is a very interesting uh, uh, game and system. And as I said, it's, it's already morphed into kind of a horror uh, film type system through Final Girl. Uh, again, core system is very, very similar, but uh, Final Girls is definitely a different game, and they've taken the system in a, a little bit different direction. I like both of them very much. I think they're at top of my uh, non-war game solo games, uh, and uh, maybe even top of my, my solo games, period. They're, they're both very, very good. They give you very thematic feel of what they're trying to uh, simulate or, or focus you on and uh, I just really enjoy that so anyway that's what I have for you today love to know your thoughts and you know I can't leave out sanctuary yes I kind of put it all in a backwards order take care all
Thanks for watching.